Hello, this is Kathy with Kincaid Special Creations, bringing you today several Easter crafts. Uh, I hope, hope you enjoy watching and will attempt to create several. I'll send you a quick video on the things I'm working with, and I may add some more in, but for this particular intro, this is what I'm going to be working with. Come check us out on Kincaid Special Creations at Facebook tomorrow at 7 o'clock for the final reveal. This is Kathy with Kincaid Special Creations coming to you with a little teaser I put on Facebook um, today. Our Facebook Live will be tomorrow, March the 9th, so this will go up after that Facebook. But I picked up all kind of, which I'll put on the beginning of this video, I picked up a whole bunch of stuff out at my she shed. And I brought it out here to the big house, as you can see behind me. And I am going to craft all day Easter stuff. Just one thing right after the other. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to start with one of the things that you'll see on that um, first video and just keep going. Hey guys, we're going to do marshmallow rabbits today. You're going to begin with two blocks that you get from the uh, Dollar Tree store and six 12 inch balloons. I believe the ones I have are 10 inch, but you want definitely want to have 12 inch balloons. You cut them off at the neck and you stretch them over the top of it. And um, if it becomes difficult, that means you've got too small of a balloon. I worked on this a couple of times, got them on just fine. And then one of them really was tight on my fingers. I was having a rough time getting them off. This is sped up a little bit, so you'll be able to see me struggling i think it's this one to get my fingers maneuvered around in there and uh get it off but you if you work with them you can get them just stretch 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 just like you would do for anything else and then pull it over top of and get it down so you'll have three on this one and then put three on the other one cut the uh, tops off just below the neck and uh I thought maybe leaving a little bit extra room would help, but it didn't. I think I just had a smaller balloon than what I should have had. So just keep stretching it over and get all three of the them on this one. And when that's done, I'll be back. It's a struggle, guys. Believe you me. I really had to struggle to get those little balloons over top of there. But the more I worked on it, the more I got them on there. So perseverance does work. It just aggravates. Just had to trim off the bottom of that because left it a little long just to see if that was the issue that I was having. And it wasn't. And then this one I tried to put on and it breaks the pieces. So I have to throw it away. Luckily, I brought extra ones from the she shed. And this one goes on just fine. So just keep working at it until you get all three of them on. The reason you put the balloons on is to cover up all the blocks. You could paint them if you wanted. It would be the same difference if you don't want to fool with the balloons. But you will have to put several coats on to cover up those little dice. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use Chanel stems to make bunny ears of which we're going to fill in with some burlap so i'm just trying to figure out can i do, make a set of bunny ears out of one uh chanel stem just conserving you know that's why those crafters do see if it works and it does they're a little small for my liking on this bunny so we'll have to see if that works or if i need to make new ones but you'll see in a little bit so now I'm going to um, put eyes. I went out and got some googly eyes. About the right size, I think, for this little rabbit. And this is called Fast Drying Glue from Dollar Tree. You get it in three. There's three bottles of stuff in the same one. Don't buy it. Because unless it's supposed to work on certain specific stuff, it did not fast dry on this at all. 
I put it all together and it looks good on there but it did not dry I did not I don't know if I didn't wait long enough or whatever but if you're in a hurry don't use that because it is not like super glue it does not set up like that it's sticky like super glue but it does not set up so now I'm trying to make a little dose I should have went on Pinterest and looked what a rabbit's face looked like. Maybe I could have drew a little bit better picture. Hmm, probably not. But, look, I give him whiskers, and I'm going to give him some little buck teeth. You know, rabbit style. Alright, so then that's going to make the boy done. So, there we go. His eyes still are not drying, but, you know, they will in a little bit. And here we have the little girl. The difference between the boy and the girl you'll see in a minute is one has eyelashes and one does not. My version of boy and girl. Then uh, here I'm going to try, you know, button for punishment, try this glue again on the little girl. The eyes look cute on there if it had just stuck to start with. And here we're going to make her a little nose. A set of whiskers and a set of buck teeth, just like the fell. I should have left hers without buck teeth. But anyway, she definitely going to look like a little rabbit when we're done. There's her little eyelashes going on. It. And here's when I realized that glue is not drying because it's just, it's squishing out everywhere. And everything so I tried to wipe it off and it makes my eyelashes it done fair addition but still not really great so we'll cut the little bottom off of that one and there's just two faces ready to go and then here is the ears and I said I still found and determined I'm gonna make them out of one so I wanted to make this second set match the first set and that's the best way to do it is to just lay it right on top of the other one um, if you if it's the way you like it. And these are perfectly good rabbit ears, but they're just too, in my opinion, they ended up being too little. So, then in here I am coming back. I decided I was going to make take one Chanel stem and make an ear, and I'm putting hot glue on. Please be very very careful working with burlap and hot glue because it will soak through and it will burn you if you're not very very careful and yes for anybody that's wondering i do have the little pink things uh out in the she shed but it was uh a little chilly and i was really in the mood to just get these crafts done so I didn't walk out there and yes I should have because I burnt my finger really good here in a little bit so I should have went on and got my finger protectors lifestyle is live and learn look how much cuter that looks on there so now I'm gonna put the other three together this is just pieces of um, spare or scrap burlap that I had laying around uh, so, always keep your little scraps. You never know what idea you're going to come up with tomorrow. And you can either use the scraps or you can go buy a whole brand new one and have extra scraps. So, for me, I would rather use the scraps that I have. Get them, as I say in my 23 and 23, use up or get rid of something or use up something that you would not normally use. So, Normally, I wouldn't use scraps of something. I, I still have plenty. See, I burnt my finger. But then you, you, when you don't use your scraps, you just have them sitting around, sitting around, sitting around. And then you come with this idea, well, what am I going to do with my scraps? So this is one of those things that I just went ahead and used my scraps up for. I got a little trash bag sitting beside me. That's where I'm putting all that stuff. I'm not just throwing it in the floor. So that I have to pick it up later. I'm actually putting it in a trash bag. But, you know, if the need arises, the floor works. You got a broom and a, and a dustpan. 
But that's not what I'm trying to do in 23. I'm trying to keep myself all organized and cleaned up. I do have some stuff in there I need to carry back to the she shed from where we worked here. But um, I used up quite a bit of that stuff. You'll see as we're going along. These are the Chanel stems, the burlap that you've seen, the little uh, dice that you've seen. So now I'm going to put the ears on. And dummy me thinks that's little pieces of glue is going to hold that up there while I'm getting the other one. It didn't work. So now just take them, put them in the glue, and hold them for a bit until the glue cools down. Because when it as it cools down, it will lock itself one to the other one. But if you let it set there hot, it's not going to be very good. It'll just slash around and everything else. So evidently I had something that was not all together. So this time I'm going to use my pliers to hold it in place. And there we go. All done. And then I'm going to pick up the little boy and work with him. And I notice his eyes has fallen off. So I just use my hot glue. I figured hot glue would melt those balloons, but it did not. It didn't have a bit of trouble with them. The only thing it did do is give me a little bit of glue, uh, spider webs, which I had to clean off, which then let me know that the other eye come on. So I just glued it in place. There we go. Get all them glue spider webs off. I should have edited that out. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, now I'm going to hold it there and then turn it upside down and put my other ears on. This time I'm going to play it smart. I'm going to do a double thing without moving it. There we go. One set of ears. And hold it down with the scissors. Look at me. I got it managed. Alright guys, there's the two little marshmallow people all done and ready for the shelf. Now before we showcase them on Thursday, we do put bows on top of their head. So that makes them look, and looky there, there they are with their little bows. Now the fellow should have had a little blue bow, but, you know, when in Rome, they say. So there we go. That is the um, two little marshmallow rabbits that we did. And off to the X tool, yay! We finally got the X tool together. Mandy worked hard on it. She got it up and and running and she got the program downloaded and practiced on it she made two hearts one she put chrissy's hand or uh, nickname on banks and one that she put um her name on and uh, they took those home with them but this was she asked me what i wanted and i said well i said do me an easter sign for the facebook live i said put on this round put some bunny loves me and she did it, and she could, instead of making the word love, she put a little heart on it. Made it just as cute as it can be. Now I'm painting those little tiny rabbits that I'm going to put at the bottom in antique wax. It's just a brown stain-like color that you can use. You can sometimes put it on and wipe it off with a tissue, make it a lighter brown, or leave it on like I did with this and make it a darker brown. And if you want it even darker, wait till it dries and put another coat on, and it'll be a darker brown. But there we go. My two little face and rabbits. There we go. And there are more glue spider rabbits and uh, spider webs and a little glue dot. That hot glue gun gets so hot, it'll just drop glue anywhere. That's how I get burnt so much. So now I'm going to work on the ribbon. And guys, I cannot make a bow. I was banding around taking this out of this but i wanted you to see the struggle is real making that bow i tried and i tried and i tried and i could not get it done it just was not happening so i'm gonna let you watch as i struggle and then see what solution i come up with be back in a bit so i'll do it that way Let's do it the other way, the way I like to do it. Okay. We're going to make a bow. Like this. Bring the other one in. And cut it off. it in 
and glue it together. And you got those two like that. Now you want another one where the bow is that same size. Okay. I still need something to tie it with. Oh, you just tie it with that. Yep, that's a little bigger. This is the Kincaid Special Creation Bow. <laughs> I'm sure a million people have done it before. However, it's the only kind I seem to be able to do. Let me put it like this. Not that, okay. Let's go right there a bit. Go right here. Hey guys, sorry about the lowness of the voice on that previous uh, clip. I wanted to leave it in because I wanted you to see me struggling with making that bow. Um, so, I've been videoing with my phone, and I guess I'm not close enough, so I'm doing a voiceover to see the rest of it. This is the only type bow that I have been able to manage. Even a shoestring bow is hard on me. So, this is what the bow you'll see the most on any of my projects until I can manage it. That's a little outside my comfort zone, but I'm going to work on it. I'm going to show everybody that I can make a different type bow. I just don't know when. You'll have to keep watching to find out. So we're going to let you work on seeing me put this together, and I'll be back in a bit. You two must be all crafters. There we go. Number two. Now. Okay, guys, we're going on to part one of the Easter egg and chick garland. Part two will come up later in this video. I took my Cricut and cut out egg shapes, eight of them on each one of those sheets of paper. Then I take, took them out, and now I'm currently gluing them, four of them on each one. I started out with tacky glue, but tacky glue just wasn't my friend. Oh, no, I take that back. Tacky glue did work on this project. It's on a different project. It didn't work. So I sat there and I'm gluing all these together. There's eight of them all together. And they will become part of a garland. Uh, you'll see in a minute the, uh, I have little chicks that I paint yellow. And that'll be the other part. But this is just the first part because I had to wait on the chicks to dry. So I went on to a different project and it happened to come up next on my phone so I'm not sure how to cut and paste yet but I will get there eventually as soon as somebody can show me on Wondershare how to get that done so I'm going to let you just watch me put all the rest of these together be back in a bit I'm going to be painting the chicks in the color Maze by Waverly. Back to the music.
guys here is where I really step outside my comfort zone I'm looking through some flowers that I thought that I wanted to put on this sign they have little uh, clips on the back of them so I'm sitting there pulling the clips off and then I have to hot glue the one set of leaves back on but those are the prettiest little flowers I guess they're flowers that you could pin on your dress if you was going to church or something but so then I take this sign and pull it apart. I did not mean to take the frame apart, but I just put a little tacky glue and hot glue and then put it back together um, so that I could put my sign back in when I was done. And it worked pretty good. Uh, that's It's still together. So if you happen to pull your frame apart, just take you a little bit of glue. Do not rely on strictly hot glue because hot glue and wood sometimes play fair, sometimes they don't. So now we're going to set it out of the way, and I'm going to take Waverly. This is Moss by Waverly, and I'm going to draw me a hillside. And this this uh, dry, goes on a greenish color, but when it dries, it's more of a grayish green color, which was really weird to me. I thought it would stay this pretty green, but... I actually like it better for the hillside in the uh, grayish color. So now on the other side, I'm going to paint the uh, sky with, um, I believe it is Tahiti Blue by Delta. So I'm, as I keep telling everybody, I'm not an artist, but I do like to dabble every once in a while. And since I didn't could have used a stencil uh, to do this with, I thought, well, I've I seen my daughter uh, paint over the weekend, and she done pretty good. Well, no, she done excellent. Let's just put it where it is. So I thought, well, I'll try my luck at doing a little bit of different stuff on this one. So currently I'm just painting the sky blue and the hillside in, like I said, a green. But when it dries, it dries more gray-green. Um, so that's a pretty cool color. I wouldn't have thought that when I uh, started painting, but it worked out pretty good. Okay, so now once I get that done and it dries, I'm going to take fern and I'm going to make me some grass. Just long lines, or short lines in this case. Just in the, in the yard, one, two, or three, sometimes five. And then I'm going to take celery, which is also a Waverly color, a little pale green. And it's the first time I opened it, so I have to shake it. And I'm going to take and do what Chrissy calls highlights. So it does make a difference in it. And then I was playing a little bit fancy. And I took the white, no, sorry, the yellow <clears throat> maze again, and a Q-tip. I took the end of it and it made me some flowers. Some Easter lilies. Well, at least that's what I call them. May not be what anybody else does. That's what I call them. So, now I'm going to paint some clouds in the sky. Just little ginger jaddits. But, hey, the clouds come in all forms and varieties. So, that worked for me. And I had cut out a different design. And this cross was on there. I used the cross for something else and something I'd done, and I just had it left over. So I put it on there and put in fancy his handwriting as I can. He is risen. And then I'm going to take and hot glue that back into that frame. I should have paid closer attention. The word risen is really down a little farther than what it should be. On the back of that, it says, Do small things with great love, and what better. What better gift did Jesus give to us than to do that very thing? So, there we go. And now I'm going to paint down. I'm going to take the, I believe it's the fern color. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to paint all around the outside edge. And then I'm going to go through with the inside edge, which you won't be able to see because I have it backwards. Because I can't see well. So, I have to have all that stuff right up in my face. Um, to be able to not paint on everything I didn't want to. Should have painted this frame before I put the uh, picture back in there, but didn't think about it. Did, uh, uh, the brown would have worked. I just liked it to be green. 
So it's it's always a personal preference when you're crafting as to what you end up having it to look like. If you're happy with it and you're satisfied, then it's perfect. So I'm going to let you listen to some more music. Okay guys, to set this craft up, if I don't lose my yellow paint, I've painted all six, there's six blocks there, I've painted all six of them with two coats of white. They are also a set of dice, but they're little square blocks that you get for in a package from Dollar Tree Store. So the first one I painted was Maze uh, from Waverly. Second one I am painting is the Limeade Green from Apple Barrel. I believe that was the cap that just went past me. And then I'm going to um, put the lid on the yellow. Yay me. Paint orange. This is just orange for uh, Craft Smart, I think. The Michael's color. So I'm just painting these in six different colors. So I've got them ready to uh, put letters on. So there's the orange one. And then I think I go with the purple. I'm not sure what color the purple this is. Um, but it's a purplish blue color. Um, so that's what I wanted for this one. Kind of all pale eastery colors. Um, it's going to end up being a shelf setter. So I just wanted to have some really... This is a pink parfait also from Apple Barrel. One of the better pinks i think there's also one called lady slipper i think from uh um yeah you get from walmart waverly from walmart my let my words leave me but you know i am almost 65 so i will try to keep things together uh now we're going to go with the um blue that i've been using this whole time tahiti blue i thought that was a very pretty not a really pastel blue but it's a really pretty blue so i thought well i'll use that one to keep up with in fact main colors in this is the colors that you're seeing me use right now through these all all these easter projects so if you see one color that you like it's one of the colors that i said now, I've got the letters <clears throat> that you get from the Dollar Tree store. And I'm just going to spell the word Easter um, in those big old letters. Then I'm going to flip it over. And does anybody see my mistake? Because I did not when I did it. When you're doing... <clears throat> Just so you don't make the same mistake. When you're doing it, please remember that when you flip it, start on the opposite side. So see, I had spring. And when I flipped it over, Easter was backwards. If I flip it back, spring's going to be backwards. So then I had to go back through and change the, the, the position of the Easter letters to make them opposite the spring ones. 
At first, I started with the tacky glue. I was afraid that that was not going to dry clear if it come out the outside of it. So I went through and got my Mod Podge. And now I'm putting my letters down. Of course, almost always when I work with a T, I tear part of it off. I don't know why I do that. But anyway, there is all of Easter. Then I'm going to flip it over and put the spring letters on. And then I'll put a good coat of Mod Podge on everything. Just to hold the letters in place. <clears throat> so when you're handling it. Not that you'll be handling it much. But you might handle it a little bit. So just keep it all nice and secure on there. As it's setting up on your shelf through the season. So I'm going to let you watch me continue to do this. And I'll play some music. Okay, here you're going to see me come back with some uh, Cricut uh, little eggs I had printed off. And you see, I, even after I told you that I was, it left that plain so it was glue, I still put the letters on the wrong side. Rather than taking the letters off and fixing that, I just simply painted it. When it gets dry, I'll put the little egg on top of it that belongs there. So, these are just little Easter bunny rabbits and Easter eggs and then uh, the cross for the good for the Lord because after all it is it was his day so we're going to just glue them all on this board I'm figuring out the spacing and then marking it so I can hopefully put it back in there about the same spots and there we go and getting all the letters in the right order had to go get me another piece of uh, I mean another stick of glue because I was almost out and there we go and you remember them two little pink flowers that I had got for the sign sitting there thinking 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 mm, maybe purple nope went and got the pink ones that's the ones I wanted there we go so there it is there's all the beautiful spring colors with this little spring roses on it. And it just looks absolutely gorgeous. I love this. I can set it up for Easter and then turn it around and have it left up for the rest of the spring till summer gets here. So I hope you all enjoy this. I hope you try it. I think it was a really fun little project. I think it turned out really cute. It's just a little statement piece off we go into part two of the easter egg and chick garland i love this little garland i took little teeny tiny beads and put them on the back sideways where the hole would be so that i could string them and then i went back through and put hot glue in the hole so that i could put a little bit of paint over it it's just easier way than putting out putty and everything in a project you've already painted so just put you a little bit of paint over it and it will dry and you won't be able to see it so there is all of there are six of them all together even though you're just seeing five there is six little chicks there and i'm going to put the word spring here comes the easter eggs and i took the uh crocodile and cut holes in it. it's just big fancy hole punch but it will go through anything. It didn't even think twice about them little Easter eggs. So, and now I'm pre I'm cutting out from the letters that I had already used the background for them because I'm going to take those and make stencils. So if you need a stencil real quick, don't throw your paper away that you got your letters off of because they make perfect little letter stencils. So I'm going to cut them out and put them on the chick. And in the meantime, I'm going to let you guys listen to some music.
Just a little bit about stenciling. First, you need to have a stiff bristled brush. It don't matter what size, little projects, of course, you want to use a little one. Bigger projects, you could use a bigger one. But the stiffer the, the bristles are that will stand straight up instead of flopping all over the place, the better off you are. Hold your stencil down, either with tape or if I'm just using my fingers. And just up and down motion, stipple the, the, the pattern onto uh, the paint onto the stencil. Try to do it as straight up and down as you can and with as less paint on your brush as you could possibly get away with because the more paint you have on that brush or the gooshier the paint is, if it's like got water in it or it's real liquidy, the more chance you have of that paint going underneath that stencil. And if you're stenciling on raw wood, it's likely to spider web out of the place where you're painting so be very very careful even if you did it exactly right when you pull that stencil up that you could see some spider webbing out from the uh, stencil itself on raw wood painted wood not so much but on raw wood you can so I'm gonna let you go back to the music Okay guys, this is the finished project. It has the word spring on it. I, for all the painted letters, I ended up going over them with a black Sharpie marker. That way it would make it look. I'm going to hang it here, but I'm going to have all the houses out from the background so that it can be a really pretty display. Okay guys, the final project of the day is going to be a set of gumballs. One is going to be in pink and one is going to be in blue. I'm going to make them out of little baby food jars that my daughter, granddaughter, gave me uh, last year. First one I'm going to paint in the Tahiti blue and the second one I'm going to paint in pink parfait. So I'm going to let you go along and watch me do the painting. Listen to the music. The bottoms will be made out of these flower pots that again I'm painting that in the uh, Tahiti blue and the other one I'm painting in the pink parfait to match the lids and the bead that will go on the top of the lid for a little knob. Alright guys let's get back to the music.
I started to paint the lid in that pink, but it was just, it was not covering. So I decided that I'm going to wipe that off and paint it first in Waverly white chalk paint um, and then let it dry and then see if it, the pink covers it better. So there, that's what I'm putting on it is Waverly white chalk paint. Then I'm going to let it all dry. Then I'm going to hunt up some. I decided to get the maze by Waverly to paint the little chicks and the antique wax also by Waverly to paint the little bunny rabbits. These are going to be attached to a little um, jingle block and set down inside the uh, little uh, baby food jars. And then I'm going to put some Spanish moss around it and then glue it all together. It's going to be really cute. So I'm going to let you watch me finish doing it. And I'll see you in a bit. Notice how good the uh, pink parfait covers over the white on that lid after all is said and done. So always remember if you're going to do such a pale color on a dark green or blue or black or anything, put you a coat of white on it first or a coat of black, either one, just to give it a good base color so that your color will then shine up good. Uh, I'm looking for E6000, which I don't have any in the house. So I found something that's like that, but it's not open yet. And I really, because it didn't have any way of sealing it, I really didn't want to open it. If I'd have been thinking, I could have put some plastic wrap on it. But I give up here in a second and just go get the hot glue gun. And it holds remarkably well. I put these on on a sideways thing, these little chicks and bunny rabbits, thinking that, oh, it'll be cute. They can set side the uh, you know so you can see both of them that did not work guys because i did not factor in the fact that those uh jingle blocks will not fit down inside that baby food jar so you'll see in a second i'm putting the little knobs on the top of them and then little um beads make a really cute little knob on it so then i had to take it apart and glue it standing up and down and it works pretty good that way. So there's our little chick, number one, going in. And I staggered the other one down just a little lower so that he could be seen too. And the one behind him could be seen. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the rabbits. Get them in, in place. And I was amazingly surprised at how well that hot glue held down inside that glass jar. I don't know if wood does better when you're putting it to glass versus putting it on wood. But anyway, there it is, and I'm going to get my Spanish balls. Then I realized outside on the porch I had a container of Spanish balls that was already open. So I went out there and got my open one and started sticking it down in there. There's not enough room, guys, for a lot. So just start out with a little tiny bit and move it around. I'm using my Cricut weeding tool to get it down in there where I wanted it to be. And there we go. There is our bunny rabbit. For some reason, I didn't get a picture of the chick, but there you go. I want to invite you guys to like, comment, share this video, 
and I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Contact me if you like. Have a good day.